Hey everybody, welcome to one in a series of videos about the Zenobia Award. Now what is the Zenobia Award? Well, I'll have some links in the description below the video, but the Zenobia Award is a design award put together by various folks across the board game industry, and it's targeted towards marginalized designers and also topics for games. So all of these games that I'm gonna be showing you on these videos are from different historical contexts and different time periods. Now at the time of recording this video, the Zenobia Award has just announced and narrowed down their selection of finalists. And I saw this announcement and I looked at some of the games that they had announced and a lot of them look really, really interesting to me. So I reached out to uh, the folks at the Zenobia Award and they put me in touch with the designers of all of the finalists. And I've had a chance over the last several weeks to demo some games, do some interviews, do some play testing. And so I'm gonna bring you uh, some showcase of some of those finalists. Now, this stuff, if you're watching this in the future, the game may have changed. If the game eventually gets published, I'm sure it'll look a lot different. All of these videos are gonna be showcasing the game on Tabletop Simulator. So again, it, things might have changed and there may or may not be links to the Tabletop Simulator mod directly. That may change in the future as the designers you know, feel differently about maybe showcasing the game in its various different states. Okay, so today we're gonna to take a look at the season by designer Lauren Eno, and we'll go ahead and read here. As head of a landed gentry family during England's Regency era, manage the activities and education of your household young ladies while maintaining their reputation, health, finances, marital status, and skills. So I actually had to look up what this actually meant, and the landed gentry families were just kind of like one step below somebody that might have a title like Duke or an Earl and that kind of thing. So they were well-to-do families, uh, but they didn't really hold any particular title or position within uh, the landscape of England there. So let's go down to the table and we'll take a look here at the main board that you can see here as well as each player has their own individual uh, player board. And what this effectively is mechanically is a worker placement slash kind of a deck building game. So the way that the rounds are going to work is you're going to each have a little meeple here, a little pawn, and you can see these various different action spaces up here numbered one through all the way down here to 16. And this is gonna help determine the player order as well as different bonuses and payouts that you have to make during the round and adjust some of the action. So after everybody places workers out here onto the center of the table, then you're gonna resolve, each person's gonna resolve two actions. And the goal of the game is to basically acquire skills to either work as uh, a potential wife for one of the suitors so you can have a marriage and also maybe you can instead be a spinster and so what's going to happen at the start of the game is each player is going to get a lady and an end game goal card so we'll just draw some randomly in the real game you'll draw two and keep one but we'll just do this for fun and so here we've got fanny she starts at age 16 constitution of two and number of cards so you go here and you'll mark with your collection of cubes here, she's got a constitution of two and starting age of 16. And so as they get older over the course of years, you're gonna to try to get them uh, married by the time they are 23, or and you need to debut them by the end of their 18th year. And if you get lower than you know one constitution, then this uh, gal will actually uh, become deceased. And you can see here is the uh, number of cards that you you'll, will want to have in your hand and what you're going to do over the course of the game is go to these different sort of disciplines here and you can see here uh, accomplishments and art mastery dancing mastery uh, French Italian piano singing and so on so you have these kind of mastery skills here and then these kind of generic accomplishments here so we'll just flip this over and shuffle it so you can see self-study gardening art uh, sewing embroidery and these are all kind of to quote unquote kind of impress possible suitors and you can take actions up here and this is the uh, assembly room up here whereas over here you have the all max assembly room over there on the right hand side and then down here you have the patroness of all mac as well to get one of these kind of vouchers here so you can see down here there's a number of different actions that you can take you can pay a social call get a personal physician governess uh, study alone, study with the governor, study with the master, and so on. And so after you've selected your sort of placement up here, this is kind of the different area that you're going to visit. So you have a little bit of a rent payout here. So you've got minus 300 pounds. You're going to get plus one to your reputation by here, but you won't increase your constitution at all. 
However, if you are here in this particular season, if we jump over here, the round is played through the course of uh, four or five years, and you can even play it up to nine years down here, but kind of the, the basic or medium length game is four or five years, and then you can play uh, up to nine if you want. And you're gonna go over a course of four different rounds per year, and there's gonna be different seasons. Now the seasons are gonna come into play here. So if you're in here in the spring season, then you actually will lose some reputation. So there'll be some different kind of uh, stuff baked into it with the different seasons. So here, uh, during the round changes, if you're in here in winter, you can also do uh, as an action, you can get access to these different abilities here. Whereas if you go down here, it's gonna kind of change based on where you're going. And then again, this is kind of dictating the turn order as well. So once everybody's placed, you'll resolve these in order, and then you'll be able to do some actions. And like I said, the, the main thing you're trying to do is acquire these cards. So let's flip over some of these decks here, right? So these numbers that are on the cards, so there's specific sort of skills that you can get as well as numbers. And when you go to try to uh, get a potential suitor, you've got here some of the requirements. So this one here, you can see you need three in French, three in pianoforte and two in singing. But once you get them, they will flip over and they will become a husband. And then in this case, they'll have kind of a different requirement to uh, basically have a successful marriage. So if you meet these requirements, so in the ladies deck, have a total uh, greater than equal to nine for all practical skill cards and have four or more different practical skill cards. And if you win, in this case, you get an extra reputation. Whereas if we look at this one here, uh, winning gets you nothing, but if you fail, uh, you actually will lose uh, 100 pounds per year or minus two reputation per year. Per year. And if we look here at the end game uh, bonuses as well, uh, this is kind of an end game bonus point. So this one in this case says, have the most husbands who are military officers out of all players, a minimum of two. And then it gives you kind of the, uh, the distribution of them. So there's 20 possible, 18 uh, kind of in the normal deck and then two out of the other one. And you get an extra five uh, victory points there. So to give you some different things to go off of. And then up here, you can see I randomly dealt out some of these from the instructor's deck here. And these give you the different actions to, uh, you know, have instructions and in some of the mastery abilities and so on. And then if there's three or four players, you'll do out some more instructors here. Now your reputation here is, is uh, tracked on this track here. And you will have an income of, let's see, 500 pounds at the start of every round. So you get kind of an annual income because you are a part of a well-to-do family. And then if we look here, the, at the end of the round, if you took one of your actions here to put out one of your cubes out here as one of your actions, you can then bid at the end of the round on any of these where you're currently at. And then these will give you access to different things here. So for the example, this first rumor, uh, at the end of the round, if we bid on this and win this, then in the next round, you can place your worker in these invitation only spots here. So you can see these black and white spots here. These will give you uh, little bonuses, you can see the rent is actually free there. So you might want to bid a little bit on that uh, to, to try to get into there. And it, I should note that you're bidding actually reputation in this. So these are social kind of calls that you're making. The second one here, a player discards and replenishes all the instructors at one location. And then the next one, a player makes the lady of their choice lose two constitution or two uh, reputation. And so there are other things here that will like call your deck and sort of allow you to uh, manipulate your deck as well because you can see there's going to be different values for these different cards here so you might want to take some actions to get rid of some of these low values because when you do actually go take an action to uh, sort of interact with a suitor you're going to take your deck and shuffle it up and then draw cards out of it and so the chances are that you draw uh, you know higher and better performing cards are going to be a lot better if you get rid of some of these uh, lower value cards as well so there's a little bit of deck manip manipulation deck management deck building uh, involved uh, with some of these different actions and things like that here. And just to give you an idea of what you're trying to do here for your end game scoring, you can see you get two points for each marriage, five points for each marriage to an Almax suitor or non Almax suitor that has property. It will show on the card if it has actually, if they own property. And you get three additional victory points for each successful marriage. Uh, and remember I said you need to meet those other requirements once you flip the suitor over. And then one victory point for each uh, reputation. And then you get X number of victory points from the different goals there. 
Okay, so that was a very brief overview of the season. And now the main thing that kind of struck me about this game was putting you in that position of somebody that's very well-to-do. They kind of get their uh, monthly allowance, so to speak, uh, that they can go and spend and they can go and rent and live places. They don't really need to worry about uh, owning property and that kind of thing. But the thing they're probably most concerned about is their reputation, and that's going to be something they're kind of uh, dealing with. And then you also, in this case, sort of it takes place in the past. Well, this would be relevant even today in the future, uh, but is, you know, maintaining your constitution. So getting a physician to sort of help you out and that's becomes an action that you kind of unlock and that will keep your constitution up and, and keep you alive and keep you healthy uh, in this time period. And so it's also struck me the sort of uh, bleak efficiency of, you know, putting yourself in a position to sort of impress a suitor. And you're kind of doing things for that suitor to sort sort of, uh, or at least put your your women in position to impress suitors, and and then get them and sort of make these uh, successful marriages and in, the, in these successful matches, uh, which is very interesting. So I thought it, it has a nice kind of thing where it kind of sets you in a time and place where you're going to these different accommodations and these different sort of you know neighborhoods, these areas uh, to you know participate in these different acts and sort of tick and tack your strategy a little bit there and then going and learning and refining your deck and that's kind of a nice sort of add-on to it so it's kind of a nice sort of uh resource kind of management game where you're 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 putting your worker out you've got your income you've got your reputation and you're really dealing more with that than just the pure deck building side of it although the 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 nice kind of nice light amount of deck building works really well and that's something that you don't usually see. So if the game has deck building, it usually leans really heavily into that. But this is kind of like a nice sort of pasting of the deck building in there. And it kind of lives in there. So you can kind of manage that. But you're not dealing too, you know, it's not too crunchy on that side. All the crunch is in the other side of it with the resource management and that kind of thing. Uh, so again, take a look. If there's links below to the rules or to the tabletop simulator, those may come or go as the developers and the designers want to uh, share that with folks, take a look at it. I definitely recommend folks take a look at this one. And that is The Season by Lauren Eno. So thank you.